So today we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 3, Text Number 31. Text, the uh, chapter is entitled, The Appearance of Lord Shri Krishna. So today is special for me, because I'm sitting up here today, rather than out there. So when you get to sit here, you can make certain requests that you can't make when you sit there. So today, when we chant the verse, I want everyone who is from a country which you are all from, and this is not because we're bragging about where we're from, I want to show everybody here, everybody listening on Mayapur TV, that we are truly the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So I would like somebody from every country represented here to chant a sloka. And before you chant, I would like you to say what country you are from. Now if somebody from Bali chants the sloka, that means nobody else from Bali can chant the sloka. So, first in, best dressed. Does everybody understand that analogy? First in, you get to do it if you're first. Now, I notice there are a lot of Chinese devotees here. Yes, lots of you. So the first one who chants the sloka gets to do it. Now you can do it together, that's okay. But you only get one chanting shloka from China. Okay? Everyone gets this? Now, as a special bonus for the devotees born in India, you get to say the state that you are from, okay? Does everybody from India understand this? And this is how we will chant the shloka today. Is everybody with me? You, you can say something to respond. Is everybody with me? Okay. We did well. Thank you. So for those of you listening on Mayapur TV, we are represented by probably 25 countries just simply here in the room, just in the room for this Bhagavatam class in Sridham Mayapur. So Prabhupada established the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, and he called it this. In 1966, he called it the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, when all it was was a handful of boys and girls from New York City. But yet, the New York group of people chanting Hare Krishna, no, it didn't work. The, the guys from the Bowery and the girls from the Bowery that like to be around a Swami, no, that didn't work. Prabhupada said the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. And here we are some 53 years later, and we certainly are the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Prabhupada had it all the time. Okay. So before I get to the purport, I just wanted to elaborate on a story that I mentioned in Naveena Narada Prabhu's class a couple days ago about anxiety. And right now we can see Devaki is in a lot of anxiety. She's seeing all the different levels that she can be in an anxiety. People are going to make fun of me. They're going to think I'm a crazy person. I'm saying, yes, the Supreme Personality is my little baby. They probably heard that a few other times from crazy people. But no, Devaki's going to be telling the truth. But still, she's in a lot of anxiety about that. So anxiety. So I was telling a story and I gave the condensed brief version. I'm going to give you a little more elaborate version this time. In Toronto, devotees have been searching for a temple for many, many years. And they finally came upon a place. It was a church, and the, and the people in the church were moving, and they were tired of this particular building, so they put it up for sale. Sale price of this church, $500,000. We're 1975 in America. $500,000 is a lot of money, a lot of money. 
So the devotees were like, this is fantastic. They've looked at it and thought this would be perfect for a temple. They approached Srila Prabhupada and said, Srila Prabhupada, we found a place in Toronto. We think it would be perfect. And Prabhupada started inquiring. But first he said, how much are they asking? The devotee said, $500,000, Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada says, that is a lot of money. We don't want to purchase anxiety. That is not our business. We are simply trying to remember Krishna, not focus on how to make money to pay for a temple. It has a temple room suitable for us? Oh yes, Srila Prabhupada. It was a church. There's a large area. It could be a wonderful temple room. Again, Prabhupada, we don't want to purchase anxiety. That is not our business. There's a place for people to stay, the brahmacharis? Oh yes, Srila Prabhupada. There are rooms already there, Srila Prabhupada. Still, we don't want to purchase anxiety, Srila Prabhupada said. There's a place for prasadam, a kitchen? Oh yes, Srila Prabhupada. The devotee gave up at that particular stage. Okay, Srila Prabhupada, well, maybe when you come in to Toronto in a few weeks, this was in Los Angeles, the devotee approached him. When you come to Toronto in a few weeks, you can see this building. We will show it to you. Prabhupada says, yes, yes, we will see. So a few weeks goes by, Srila Prabhupada arrives in Toronto. Now from the airport to the temple that was, Prabhupada says, can you show me this building? Obviously, Srila Prabhupada had been meditating on it. They went inside, they saw the building, and sure enough, it was as described to Srila Prabhupada. This building was perfect. An old church, suitable for a temple, perfect for a temple. Prabhupada is very pleased that they had found this building. He said, again, how much are they asking for this? Bodhi said, 500,000, Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada says, hmm, it is located, very nice place. Oh, yes, Srila Prabhupada, it's right on the main road. We will get people passing by all the time. Prabhupada says, how much money do you have? The temple president says, we have $40,000, Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada says, hmm, could you raise another 60? The devotee says, well, 60,000, that's, that's a lot of money. But, you know, if you want us, we can try. And then Srila Prabhupada turned to Brahmananda and said, Brahmananda, how much money is in the BBT? And Brahmananda says, we have about 200 and some thousand. Prabhupada says, give them 200,000. Brahmananda says, we have never given anybody that kind of money. Prabhupada says, we will offer them $300,000. Devotees are like, whoa, okay. So they're still inside looking at this church. They're walking around the church and they notice there's a few of the old Christian preachers still around. They see a table with some books on it. Prabhupada looks at one of the books. He says, ask them if we can purchase one of these books. The devotee picks up a book and says, what does God look like? So the devotee said, can we buy this book from you? And the, the preacher said, no, no, you can have it. Just take it. So they get in the car and drive off. Prabhupada says to the devotee, read some of this book. He starts reading it and realizes this is going nowhere. Prabhupada says, they don't have a clue. They're just bluffing. So negotiations go through. They take it. They take the offer of 300,000. But Prabhupada says, tell them we will put a picture of Jesus Christ on the altar next to Krishna. That sounds pretty liberal, right? Prabhupada tells them they could put a picture of Jesus Christ on the altar. But the Christians say, no, 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 don't worry about it. Just give us the 300,000. We're fine with that. We want out of here. So the deal is, looks like it's going through. And then the devotees are like, but Prabhupada, you're, you said we shouldn't be purchasing anxiety. Why are, we, why are we doing this? Why are we even making this offer? Prabhupada said, there must be anxiety. If we don't have anxiety, 
We will simply eat, take prashadam, and sit around and get fat. So Prabhupada switched from one thing, no, we don't want anxiety, to there must be anxiety. So that is our mood. We must be anxiety. We must be stressing. How do we please the spiritual master? How do we please Krishna? How do we please the devotees? We must be anxiety. <laughs>